All right, thanks for having me today. My name is Abhijit Lilly. I'm a solutions engineer at Hortonworks. How many of you know who Hortonworks is in this room? All right, cool, 50%. All right, so I'll, I'll just spend a couple of minutes um, explaining who Hortonworks is, right? So we all know what Hadoop is. So it's around 2004, 2005 timeframe, Yahoo decided to build this uh, file system and analytics framework based on Google's paper for MapReduce and HDFS. So they formed a team of 30 or so engineers to build that system. And around 2006, uh, you know, they open sourced a project called Apache Hadoop, which had HDFS and MapReduce as initial projects. And they started working with Facebook and building a extensive data warehouse platform. Now, fast forward to 2011, Yahoo decided to make this team as a separate company, and that's how Hortonworks was born. So we took original 30 engineers which built Apache Hadoop from Yahoo and created a company called Hortonworks. The goal was to create an enterprise-ready Hadoop. We know there's lots of gaps in Hadoop, and we wanted to make sure that we fill up all these gaps and make Apache Hadoop enterprise-ready. Right? And one of the projects, or two of the projects we're going to talk about is Stinger, right? or Stinger and Tay specifically. So uh, I'm going to follow the same theme that Elliot had, is to make the interactive queries better. Right? And we all know Hive has certain gaps today. It is great for querying large amounts of data, but it's not that fast for interactive querying or doing dashboarding type of work. So around six months ago, we started working with Facebook to invest more heavily on Hive because A, primarily all of the customers who are using Hadoop today are using um, Hive as their data warehouse or extension to that data warehouse. I'm certainly not saying we're replacing your data warehouse, but extension to that data warehouse, right? And lots of investment, lots of code has been developed around Hive. And the way Hive QL was built was kind of difficult originally, initially, when they started contributing to it. So people have learned their ways from traditional SQL into Hive QL, right? So now all these skill sets are basically formed around Hive itself. So we wanted to take Hive into the next generation high, which supports interactive querying, dashboarding, visualization, so that you don't have to run a query, go get a cup of coffee, and your results will be there, right? So the, we need to interact with the system at a large scale. So we essentially make Stinger as an initiative. Stinger is not a product. Stinger is built on an initiative, which basically means we're going to make Hive better by improving multiple projects, right? So if you see Hive today, underneath the Hive framework is MapReduce. So essentially, when you write any queries in Hive, it turns into a MapReduce job underneath, right? So that's one. Is there any question? The second one is we know HiveQL is not completely SQL compliant, right? So we want to make sure that we give deep analytical functionality, right? We want to make sure we have wide variety of windowing functions. And we'll see where we are at with that, right? So those are the two um, two-pronged approach we are taking, right? So first, improve the latency, improve the throughput of Hive itself, and then improve the functionality of SQL because we all know SQL as we as we learn, right? So three things that come with this. One is take this MapReduce engine and basically improve with something else, right? Because we know MapReduce framework is not fast enough for interactive querying. Secondly, do and as Google released uh, the paper on, a, on, the, uh, on the Dremel, we realized that columnar format gives us better functionality. So we're investing heavily on the ORC file format. And a couple of, them, a couple of the features and functions are already released into Hive 11. We'll talk about that. And last but not the least, TES. TES is the framework will eventually replace MapReduce underneath Hive right, for better functionality and improved speed. <laughs> so, um, as I said, it's, it's an initiative, right? It's not, it's not a product. It's not a singular product. Uh, so we, what we did is we essentially divide, divide it up into three phases. 
So for the first phase, we did two things. One is uh, essentially did the base optimizations and uh, we released ORC file. And that has been released with Apache Hadoop uh, in an open source world. And it's Hive 11 as the project, right? So you can download Hive 11 today from Apache or from HortonWords.com and you will get the base optimizations in memory hash join as well as the ORC file format. The second one is, it's kind of ironic, right? So the new PMC or the new chair of Apache is Microsoft Technical Architect. Isn't that funny? But that's, that's great because they're contributing very heavily. So one of the core focus he brought, his name is Chris Douglas, he bought, brought was, we need to make this better. He wrote half of the SQL ANSI standard. So one of the focus he got into Hive is, let's make these SQL query language or make HiveQL as good as SQL query language. So a lot of uh, improvements has gone into the SQL um, you know, compatible types and windowing functions as a part of Hive 11. And we're adding more and more uh, features to it as we go along into this journey. The second phase of this project is essentially the Hive query server, which is backed by Tez. Tez in Hindi or in, in Indian language means fast, nothing else, right? So what we're doing is essentially replacing the MapReduce framework and taking it out and putting uh, Tez underneath it. So it, the, the downside to ha the MapReduce is essentially it has startup costs for your JVMs as well as the cleanup costs. So there's always a, uh, an expense of your query to start and then wait for the execution and then basically clean up. So that will go away because there will be a pre warm containers and that will give you an ability to do low latency queries. You submit a job, it's ready to go, and it will function. Obviously, query planner improvements are ongoing. So a couple of things that you know, we'll see in the next few slides is how MapReduce work, right? And how query planner is trying to uh, you know, improve the data structure, improve the uh, MapReduce jobs underneath today, and then how it will function with Tez. Um, vector query engine, it will be, um, with buffer caching, it will be available end of the year time frame, uh, give or take. So that will improve the whole Apache Hive itself uh, as close as to interactive query engine. Now, that does not mean this is a replacement for MPP, right? So the the far, far end goal for this is adding what MPP does today or uh, traditional stores like add business rules, right? Today we don't have business rules. More security structure around that, right? So that's, that's going to come way later after these phases. So that's, that's one of the things that we're also working on putting into roadmap. And essentially if you look at Apache, Jira's, or if you follow those, you will see that a lot of work is going on. A lot of people are thinking about what they can, what they can take from the traditional EDW system and make Hive better, right? So we are essentially doubling down on Hive because A, uh, the file formats or the data sits into Hive or sits onto HDFS uh, represented by Hive can be accessed by other tools into Hadoop. So it makes ecosystem better. It makes the access of data from other systems better rather than creating a net new format, right? And there, there's other projects going on that will help it improve further. Uh, you, I'll just keep it down. <laughs> so where we are at today. So as of last month, Hive 11 was released. Right? Hive 11 Im includes one key feature is analytical function. So it's not ANC, it's actually rank. Sorry, I, it's, it's a typo in there. So I, I just developed a new function in SQL, right? ANC. So no, it's, it's rank. Uh, we had lead lag, uh, first value, last value and aggregate over functions are now available as a part of Hive 11, right? There are certain improvements such as broadcast join and SMB joins that are available, as well as a lot, um, lot of new features for partitioning, right? So if you do partitioning today with virtual columns, you will see significant improvement with Hive 11, right? With Hive 10, if you do virtual column partitioning, it puts lots of pressure on name node. Here, we, we made it a lot, lot more better in Hive 11. We'll talk about ORC file a little bit later in the slides, but uh, as, as Elliot said, it's based on Google Dremel project. So it's a columnar format, uh, and it includes a lot more features. Uh, I have in the next slide or two. Tez, alpha was released also. So we released Tez as an alpha because Tez requires Hadoop 2.0, which is 
still in alpha 2. Hadoop 2.0 has a new resource scheduling function called yarn, and Tez will run as a container within the yarn application, as an application of yarn. So Tez uh, released as an alpha uh, about a month ago. So you can go ahead, go to Apache or go to Hortonworks.com and download. Uh, you'll have to compile it, but you can play with Tez today. So what's the goal, right? So today we know we can do this. We can do data mining. We can do uh, batch reporting. But this part, the, the dashboard virtual visualization and uh, parameterized reporting, it's really tricky. You can do it, but it takes a lot of time and patience. Users don't have patience to change one field and see how the visualization changes, right? It still takes a you know, few seconds to just start the query and just get the data out. So the, the goal is to make that interactive, right? An idea is to have, uh, you know, make it more SQL friendly, right? Have all the SQL functions. Um, in the meantime, we have also built in an open source ODBC driver so you can download it. And it has its own uh, SQL engine, a small part of SQL engine built into it. So if you have any visualization tools in front of Hive, the conversion of SQL to HiveQL is much better. It has improved from uh, from a visualization uh, tools perspective, not 100%, but it's still there, right? So the query, the the SQL engine, the driver itself has a lot more features than before. So you can go ahead download that for free as well. Okay, so what we did in Hive 11, right? So first, the intelligent optimizer. So in memory has joins are now available. Uh, we are also able to make certain improvements in, as I said, in virtual column partitioning. So we can now ideally scan through a big file and we look at directory structure. If it's available, we can go in and pull the data fast enough. Star schema joins, and this was one of the key things because we're able to do load the dimension tables into memory and then distribute via distributed cache. So it speed up things off of the SQL query. Now, how fast is, again, <laughs> depends on your query, but at least is much, much, much faster than where Hive 10 was two months ago. Um, lower footprint of fact tables, that's one of the things that I would like to mention because it was quite an improvement from, from the memory utilization perspective, task trackers. Um, let's see. All right, so hints are very key because what happened was with Hive 10 hints, it's really not optimal. So it, it created lots of MapReduce pipelines. Now, those requirements of hints are kind of uh, gone away. So Hive 11 is much better, and you don't have to, uh, there's no need for hints. It optimizes better because there are a lot more JIRAs that went into Hive 11 that improves the uh, functions, that are, the need of hints gone away now. Okay, so this is one of the things that we did, and th this is no way means the speed of the query, but if you look at it, the number of steps that MapReduce has to take, that's basically increment, incrementally added changes to it. So if you look at the Hive 10 without hints, you can see there are lots of multiple MapReduce job gets, uh, you know, multiple MapReduce stages started. Here, with Hive 11, star schema join without hints, we could do that only into a, uh, you know, a two-step process of MapReduce. So some of the things, if you look at those JIRAs, we remove the need of high, uh, hint to the optimizer itself. So you'll see with Hive 11, your queries will now run faster because the number of MapReduce job will essentially, the need of the number of MapReduce job will be reduced. One key feature for this, or actually one key benefit of this, is will come with TES. Because today what happens is when you write a MapReduce job, the intermediate output of the task lands on the disk, right? And we all know the disk is much, much, much slower than memory. So the goal or the, uh, the improvement what in TES is essentially take that intermediate output of the task and keep it in memory. Now, we're able to do, instead of reading that data from disk again, we can read the data faster in memory itself. So that's the, one of the steps to go to TES when you go to Hadoop 2.0 and use TES along with Hive and Hadoop 2.0, you'll be able to see the squares improve faster. Today with Hive 11, we'll still collapse that output task onto a disk for now. 
And we can go forward. All right, so we talked about ORC file, right? We looked at the storage or the data structure, how, how the data gets laid out. So you have text file, your RC file, your sequence file, and another new format, ORC file. This is a columnar structure we're able to get into Hive 11 or moving forward into Hive because it is much faster, right? It makes better, and it's evolved in Google Dremel format. So Google would release that paper uh, about a year ago. So, you know, uh, Hive, oh, sorry, uh, Facebook started working on it along with Hortonworks, and we're able to now uh, produce a ORC file format, right? So it's a columnar format. It, has a lot more features. One key feature is we're able to now consolidate the output of the math task into a single output file. So traditionally with Hive 10, without ORC file, you'll see output files or output of the task will be split into multiple files. Now we can put that into a single file. We can apply a block level compression based upon data types. Now I, I don't top of my head, which I don't know what data types, but you'll be able to apply block level compression so the footprint is smaller, as well as the amount of data needs to be written, as well as read from the disk is smaller. Now, we also can add Bloom filters. So a Bloom filter is a data structure which gives you, um, you know, a, a predictive, uh, predictive filtering, I should say, gives you an ability that this element is exist in the data or not, right? So now you can add Bloom filters in with ORC files so that you can enable quick check, does my data there or not? Okay, so here's the file layout, right? So one of the things that, this is a simple stripe, right? So if you look at a stripe, it's around 250 megabytes. So it's quite large, so you can pack lots of metadata into our C file, as well as uh, the actual row data, right? And it has index data. Index data also contains the min value, max value of the rows, and it also contains the row locations where they are. And you have the stripe footer, which essentially contains the directory uh, location on HDFS, so you can quickly go get the uh, location of the file. It, it also has, as I said, block level compression. So you can have, uh, again, it depends on the data type which you're using today, but eventually it will be available for all data types. So 250 megabytes, we think, in a stripe is large enough, and it's fast enough to accommodate that, right? Any questions so far on ORC file? So let's talk about the second phase of the project, right? So what is TES? So TES is a replacement, I shouldn't say replacement, there will be MapReduce framework in Hadoop 2.0, right? It'll be one portion of it. But TES will be a service that will enable Hive to essentially have a pre-warm containers. So when you launch a MapReduce task, there will be no more launching, a, oh, sorry, when you launch a Hive query, there will not be any map reduce charts. It will run into as a TES service in the back end. So here are the goals, right? So we want to enable a low level data processing using this engine. Why? Because we already know that with Hive 11, when there is a large data set, Hive 11, you know, can function better, right? Obviously, TES will make it much, much better. But if you have a large data set, we're talking terabytes, multiple terabytes, the processing is still there. But for smaller data set, when you look at smaller data set, we want to have something better and going beyond MapReduce. So that's what TES, that's essentially what led to TES investment. We want to enable efficient pipelining of the job. So the query optimizations, as well as the intermediate output of the jobs will be the ones that will make this much faster. So we will, with TES initiative, we will not write the output of intermediate map task onto the disk. So instead of doing map reduce, then doing map reduce, you can just do map reduce reduce, right? And obviously it is built on yarn, so it'll be a uh, it's a yarn, it'll be a yarn application. Uh, it is scheduled to go GA 
around September, October time frame, but you can still download this today and be able to test it, right? We want to make it, um, so one thing is, uh, one thing with test that we want to make sure the hive and pig job are no longer the stepchildren, right? So today with hive one, if you have a uh, hive and pig job, they move to the end of the queue. So tomorrow if you're using some sort of, let's say capacity scheduler, it'll be treated as the performance oriented job when you use a test service. Okay, so this is essentially the pictorial description of what it looks like, right? So TES will have a application master service which will, which will monitor the containers, uh, which, are, which will be the uh, TES containers. Essentially, it's live JVM. It's always on JVM type of uh, instance running on all the nodes. So the node manager, or there will be an application master for TES service uh, which will monitor and manage these containers where your job will get submitted and the data will get collected from it. Okay, can you go to the next slide, please? So, if you look at today, so you have this IO synchronization barrier, what we call, and this is what we talked about where the data lands on the disk, right? So, when you have a simple query like select something and count and group by a state, what's happening is there are multiple map tasks are going on and the output of those files are landing onto the disk. And then the next stage of the process, picking up that data or intermediate data and pushing that into uh, this, this map reduce, next map reduce task. So if you look at the test framework, we're able to A, make the query better or make query optimizer better, obviously, <laughs> the foundation of it, and we already have that. And the second thing is make the IO pipelining better because a lot of people are using mixed set of infrastructure within their Hadoop in, in, you know, environment so that the IO pipeline becomes more and more critical for smaller data sets. For larger data set, it may or may not matter, but for smaller data set, this is a key where if you look at Hive and Pig with Tez, we can keep the intermediate data in memory and access it from there. Can you go back? Yes. Which instances? These containers? They will always be running. They'll run as a some sort of daemon, yes. Now, it, it'll consume some sort of memory, right? But obviously, the, the, if you look at today's hardware, we can, we can utilize the memory better, right? When it was developed, if you look at Hadoop 1.0, it was developed for like eight cores, four, 24 to 48 gig memory machines. So that's why you will see now all these functions are added, you know, set, map read, split task equal to now increase the heap size when you run. Now those needs are gone because now people are buying 128 gig machines at the same cost they used to buy 24 gig machines. So that is very, very minor. Yes, it will consume some, but not to the extent. Okay, so some of the primary results, and you'll be able to test this when you download TES, right? So one of the things we did is with Hive, so this is Hive 11 queries, right? So that basically improves the pipelining. Um, this is the reason, this basically says it's less because it improved data pipelining, nothing else. So the optimizer has now better improvement so that I, rather than launching hundreds of MapReduce tasks, I can pipeline it better, I can do within 10 MapReduce tasks, right? This, with TES, essentially, the major difference is the launch of, ma launch of a service or you know, submitting your job to that pre-warm container. Now, the reason behind that, the launch, we only say launch here, but obviously when you launch a JVM, there's always a shutdown cost to it, and, and as a part of MapReduce job, you'll see at the end, but that 30 seconds time is now gone or will be gone with TES when you implement uh, Hive with TES. Um, the create plan, so the query planner is, you know, essentially now all these result sets are Hive 11 because now it's available as GA uh, in Apache. So all these baselines we did are essentially based on Hive 11. 
Compared to Hive 10, it's a significant improvement because of the query planner in there. Okay, so this is the this is essentially you know describes Tez. Tez is if you look at the MapReduce task, you, you look at that engine as a as a service, right? So you submit a job to that service, you get an output, and it's always on. So that's why you get a low latency, right? And that's that's basically what Tez is going to be. Tez is going to be a separate instance of projects or separate instance of application running on Yarn. So you'll have you know Node Manager managing and the subsequent services along with it. Can you go to the next slide, please? OK, so for this, we talk um, most of this, right? So this is essentially one of the things we're working on, is potentially uh, take it to future memory-based performance optimizations. And it's not like an in-memory database, but It'll, with the extent of having more and more memory on these servers and available, we'll be able to utilize these resources better, right? Now, we have an ability through TES to do that. Uh, previously, with MapReduce, we didn't. With TES, we'll be able to pre-warm this container, maybe you know, do some sort of caching mechanism with TES. That'll improve that further. So, we're, we're still talking you know, sub-milliseconds response time. We're not talking microseconds response time. But that essentially is where we're heading with the future. All these other things are almost in code complete state for Hive, Tez, uh, and basically the whole Stinger umbrella framework. Right? So we're testing now the beta phase of it, um, and it will be released very soon. And you'll be able to download that. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can go to Apache and compile that. But it, will, it is scheduled to release for GA around September time frame. Do we have any more? I have any more slides? For it. How long do I have? For I'm good on time. Good. Okay. Um, we could uh, come up to do Q and A. Sure. Can have one. I have two, so you can have one. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Fourteen, yeah. yeah. And uh, it seems like there's an ever increasing relationship with Oracle and Microsoft. Um, so, what's the? So you mentioned that they were that they were sort of instrumental. I'm going to repeat the question. Language. How much more integration can we expect here? And like, like is is this eventually going to turn into like a transactional system with the locking and locking on top of Hive Tez or is this? Uh, um, that's above my pay grade, but I'll answer this differently, right? So uh, the question here is essentially with the deeper integration with Microsoft and Hortonworks, where are we taking uh, Tez and Hive, right? Will it be replacement for traditional RDBMS? Is that a fair question? Right, it is. That, that's a great question, right? So that's, it is actually on the roadmap. So column store, in, sorry, I mean, the question is, uh, you know, for example, getting column store index in Hive or making it almost like an EDW, is, is that the fair goal, yeah. right? So the answer is potentially yes, right? I mean, we are trying to get there. Uh, as of today, the answer is no, we're not there. So the first step of the process is make sure it's equal and compliant. And Microsoft is contributing very heavily to that. Uh, through our Microsoft partnership, uh, essentially two things happen. One, 
Microsoft, star, Microsoft stopped actually developing their HPC platform altogether. So there is no shipping Microsoft HPC servers anymore. They actually prepackage uh, Hortonworks Data Platform or Apache Hadoop underneath as HD Insight. So they're thinking three ways, right? One, we have this BI lever, analytical framework. We own it. We have SharePoint. We have Power Pivot. We have Excel. 90% of the users use that, right? So let's take advantage of that. Second, they're working on a project called Hackathon, right? So it's one of the things that they introduce as a part of uh, SQL Server 14, a portion of in-memory database, right? So if you look at your data access layer, they're working on microseconds response time, milliseconds response time from a SQL database. And Hadoop, essentially, for them, stands today, is the larger repository extension of SQL Server, right? Now, given the framework they're building on top of it makes the queries transparent. Right, because working with Hadoop for a regular user uh, through an Excel is difficult today, right? From security, from access, from connections perspective. So they're making it fully integrated solution. First piece of that is making SQL ANSI compliant. Second piece of that, build more framework, make it more interactive. Third is, as I said, we're missing a lot of things that EDW has. Primarily, we don't have business rules, right? So if you look at that, it's, it's, it's far down the road map. But eventually, it'll get there, in my opinion, right? And it's not certainly, not only we are contributing, it's, it's a democratic <laughs> investment, right? So Facebook is there, Microsoft is there, so it's obviously the. That's a great, sorry. Yes, sir. So I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around there. So is it like a query optimizer approach where they're taking potential merging a reduced uh, page of one job with the max page of the next step in the process? Or how, what's happening there? So Tez, so if you look at MapReduce, right? So, oh, I'm sorry. So his question is, what is TES? He, he is trying to understand in detail what TES is, correct? OK. So to, today, if you look at MapReduce, right? So MapReduce has a resource scheduler built into it. Right? So Job Tracker manages it, and it basically distributes to all these task trackers. So what TES is, essentially, it's always live JVM engine. Right? Let's think of this way. You have a, a, a Java framework or Java engine running on every node, right? The query optimizer will submit a job to that particular instance, say, go do this for me because of your data locality, and then basically return these query uh, results to a centralized uh, reducer type framework, right? So in terms of map and reduce, that map and reduce becomes a TAS job, essentially. So you're completely replacing the map reduce framework, and TAS is essentially submitting the splits of those queries across all these data nodes. So the query planner doesn't change. It's just the service which does that data access point for you at the data locality it changes from MapReduce to TES. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, in a nutshell. Right. So if you so okay. So the question is why is why it takes so much time. So so today when you submit a query, the query planner basically goes to job tracker and the job tracker distribute the work to all these task trackers, right? And particular instance of that job instantiate a JVM to do that job for you, right? So there's a scheduling framework that's built in causing that delay because the JVM has to start it's roughly 30 seconds time. Now, what if we can eliminate that? Because we already know the data locality where the data exists. And we can, we can say, hey, if the engine or JVM is already running, we can submit this job directly. So we built that query planner to understand what TES is, or TES framework is, and eliminated MapReduce altogether. That means no more job tracker, no more scheduling through other resource manager. Yarn says, OK, there's another instance of this engine is running. You have all these resources. Go execute it.
Um, that's a great question, right? So we tested some of those con concurrency patterns. So if you look, sorry, I just forgot. So he's saying all these optimizations are basically built on effective resource utilizations, right? So what if you have multiple concurrent queries? What happens to the performance, right? So um, this is not, not by any means your daemon is running, it has access to everything. Right, so it's a it's a kind of C groups built onto it. So if you look at, at a higher level framework, you have to use some sort of capacity scheduler. So when you pull all these resources together and you say, you, Mr. Customer A, has a 20% execution or 20% slice of the pie, you're not going to get many more tasks on top of it. So there's always a rest, uh, resource scheduling is going to happen from a higher level through a capacity scheduler type of framework but you only get a percentage of that particular instance of resources happening on there. So effectively, there will be concurrency limits on, on test service. I don't know the actual numbers for that yet, to be frank with you. At the moment, yes. So we haven't built into any quotas today, so that's still available. So intermediate results will be available as part of HDFS, yes. But there is, a, there is one more JIRA open so that you can build into an HDFS quotas available so that one crazy developer cannot <laughs> hog on to everything. So you can actually set quotas moving forward uh, in HDFS. So there's a JIRA that will eventually submit that includes the total capacity, intermediate task capacity, and whole nine yards. Not there yet, but it'll be there. But does that answer your question? Yes. So, sure, sorry. <laughs> okay, he's, uh, he's basically asking that this is, ba this is essentially turning into an MPP uh, type of uh, a system. And how will, we manage, um, how will we manage the resource scheduling when you have large scale of writes, just example one. And the second, oh, second I forgot, sorry. I, more concurrency. Right, so MPP, okay, so if you look at resource scheduler perspective, right, so Yarn will combine capacity scheduler into it, right? So today we have a capacity scheduler built on top of it. So you will always get a percentage of the resources available to you, right? And that, that boils down to disk, memory, CPU, and it's not a map and, map and reduce task anymore or slots anymore. It's a portion of the instance you can use. Uh, it will be combined together from a yarn perspective, so you will have effectively out of the box, anybody can default group as 100% utilization capacity. So if you start 2,000 map ta or 2,000 tasks, you'll be able to do whatever you want to do with it. But essentially, the resource scheduler will be a modified capacity scheduler built on yarn that will effectively manage that quota framework. I shouldn't say quota, the, the resources better for you. Oh, yes, sir. So the question is, what's the relationship with new hi, new Hive version, yeah. and does it use Tez? So Hive, you mean Hive 11? Yeah. Right, so Hive 11 does not use Tez. Hive 11 still uses MapReduce. It's still based on uh, Map Hadoop 1.0 framework. The next version of Hive around September timeframe will use Tez.
Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so I'll repeat the question. Right. So now I remember to repeat. So when is, when is it available? So in a nutshell. So today, you have Hive 11 available as full GA. So you can go ahead, download Hive 11. That does not come with Tez. Okay? You can go to Hortonworks or Apache website. You can download Tez as alpha, as well as the new version of Hive with certain of JIRAs made to it, which can use Tez. So it is available on alpha. You have to compile it and you know, use it um, from that perspective. And the fast query, is it already there? Yes. So in alpha, R4, well, Hive 11, no. So Hive 11 as a GA product, no. But Hive 11 combined with some other JIRAs and TES as an alpha, you can get the real-time query. Hive 11, half, and Tez. I just. <laughs> I looked all over the place. I couldn't find it. Yeah, that, that's another challenge. So, what we're doing, so that's, that's one thing, right? So, you go to Apache, it's like, okay, I need to download this particular project and 10 different patches with it to get to that 11 and a half point. So, what we're doing as Hortonworks, we're basically combining these and doing a quarterly release cycle. So, we're essentially combining. What we, what we have tested with from a particular project and patches perspective and putting that into a Hortonworks data platform. Again, it's, it's open source product. You can go ahead and download from us or either from Apache, but we're making sure that Hive 11 with the four zeros I listed, 3784 for star schema join, is part of it tested and works better. But we're actually releasing as a quarterly release cycle, right? So Hortonworks data platform 1.3, 1.4, which will coincide with 11, 11 and a half. I shouldn't say 11 and a half. What are these they pick up next time? Any other questions? Yes, sir. So yes, there will be, right? Question is. <laughs> so, the question is, will there be support for TP joints, right? So the answer is yes. I don't know if it made to Hive 11 or not. So, and it is, it is, uh, it is on the roadmap actually. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.